Hi, I'm Nathan from Serious Geeks, and in this video, I'm going to review the Shard of the Void Dragon. We have seen glimpses of this model in leaks and teasers released by the Warhammer Community website, and now we have a lot more information to play with. Firstly, I want to say this is a spectacular model, it looks absolutely stunning. When I look at the model, it actually evokes the idea of power and energy and unknowable vast alien intellect and that is really good it's really well done in a model format i certainly want one of these models to complement my army definitely so how do i think it might fare on the tabletop well if we look at its stat line we can see it looks like it's fairly tough it's got nine wounds so it's the equivalent of gilliman a three plus armor save which is nothing to be sniffed at we'll go over its survivability in a bit but if we just keep in mind its actual stat line it has the usual two plus weapon skill and ballistic skill it has a decent strength of 6, the toughness 7 as I mentioned, and 5 attacks, which is actually pretty good. It does quite a lot of damage with those 5 attacks, I'd imagine. Its main weakness will be fighting large numbers of cheap cannon fodder, which goes without saying. It's an immense model that is designed to just smash apart something really dangerous. And it looks like with that stat line, it might have a good chance. As such, to complement its killing ability, it needs some decent weapons. And on the screen now, you can see it has got some powerful weapons. Starting with its shooting attack, the Spear of the Void Dragon, you can see it's only range 12, which wouldn't be brilliant if it wasn't for the fact that this thing already has a movement of 8, which makes it fairly fast. And being a Catan Shard, I imagine it could probably move through terrain like previous ones have been able to. And even so, obscuring terrain should enable it to actually move around the table without getting shot off so easily. When you do fire it, it will have a strength of 9, minus 4 AP and D6 damage, which increases, in my view, to D3 plus 3, which is much more consistent, when firing at vehicles. It does have the capacity to hit multiple targets, but that will require them to be lined up fairly well, because you can only hit different units more than once, rather than actually stacking hits on one unit. So to get the best out of this, you're going to have to line up several vehicles or several elite units, but even so, it's not terrible. If you get the opportunity, do it. If not, just have one last big blast against the target and then move in for the kill and assault. In close combat, the Spear of the Void Dragon also has a strength of 9. It has minus 4 AP and also D6 damage and gets the same benefit when fighting against vehicles. It doesn't have any multi-hitting ability, but you already do have 5 attacks. So if you are fighting vehicles or elite units, you can rest assured you're going to be doing a lot of damage to them. These weapons are very effective and they will combine with any existing rules for the Catan, such as the powers that we know they had in the past couple of Codex books. We don't know the details of these powers and how they're going to work, but I can imagine they'll be very similar and it helps you to generate more mortal wounds and do more damage with the unit anyway. Moving on to its survivability, we have the Necrodermis. As has been the case for the Catan since they were first released, the Void Dragon gets a 4-up in vulnerable save. This is the benchmark, we expect a really decent and vulnerable save, and he's got it. Rather interestingly, like Gasgoth Racker, there is a limit on how many wounds this model can suffer in any one phase of the game. In this case, the limit is 3, so the wounds of 9 that is on its profile combined with a 4 plus in vulnerable save, and this limit of no more than 3 wounds per phase, means that this model can actually survive for quite a long time. And it should be keeping the character keyword, which means it's not going to be easily targetable either, especially with obscuring terrain and the fact that it can hide behind your other units. The last special rule of this model is matter absorption. Firstly, this directly references the Catan powers that we know are going to be in the book. We just don't know what kind of powers they're going to be, so we can't really comment on how useful they'll be, but we know that they're going to be causing damage because they wouldn't reference them otherwise. Likely, it'll be the same as what they've always had. There might be a few tweaks, and there might be a couple of new ones. We'll have to wait and see. Most importantly for the Void Dragon, though, if this model, or one of its Catan powers, destroys a vehicle, on a 2+, this model regains one wound. At first glance, this may not sound like much, but when you consider that this model was only going to be suffering a maximum of three wounds in any given phase of the game, this could actually make a big difference, and I actually quite enjoy it because it's also very thematic. In fact, if you look at the model, it even looks like it is reanimating or creating matter out of nothing for its body, 
So this could actually be a very thematic idea and it's tied into the model as well. I think it's brilliant. Overall, we don't know the full picture of this model at all. We definitely don't know the points values. We don't know if it gets any stratagem support. We don't know if there are any other special rules that may affect it. We also don't know what the Gatan powers might be. However, given what we do know about this model, I can tell you it's going to be very effective in close combat and it's going to be a real threat to opposing armies. I think this model will be strongest in an army that is geared towards assault, such as one which has plenty of Scorpec destroyers or flayed ones or both. This model will really support those units because target saturation is always good, the opponent will know where to put their attention and this one can really smash something big. If the opponent has a knight, this unit can actually do a serious amount of damage to it. I wouldn't rely on the Void Dragon to kill an entire knight on its own in one turn, but it can easily finish one off, especially one which is at half wounds, and being Necrons, it's quite easy to do that kind of damage to such a model. Anyway, those are my thoughts on this model. There's not much to review otherwise. I'll probably do a full review at a later date, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, I really want to grow this channel and it's doing so well recently. Everyone's been very supportive and I'm extremely grateful. And I will catch you all soon. Peace out.